Hello, and welcome to another Argocom presentation, this time about Argo rollouts. So, can I see, Hans, how many people know what is Argo rollouts? Okay, how many people are using Argo rollouts? How many people are using Argo rollouts in production? How many people are using Argo rollouts without Argo CD? You're the best. Okay, so my name is uh, Kostis. I'm working at CodeFresh as a developer advocate. Uh, I'm also working with the Argo team, mostly with Argo rollouts, of course. And I'm also the co-author of the first ever GitHub certification that you find in the link there and in the QR code. Uh, I have to say some things about CodeFresh. It's an enterprise solution on top of all the Argo projects, not just Argo CD. And if, if you have seen the news recently, Octopus Deploy said, oh, they are doing some nice things. Let's acquire them. So what, what we're going to talk about today. Uh, first, we're going to explain the problem and why it's a problem. And then I'm going to tell you about some things that you might not know, the like Kubernetes downward API and ephemeral labels. And then we will see a demo, because this is why you are, you are here. Yes, and hopefully it will work. So let's start with the basics. If you have never seen Argo rollouts before, this is a two minute introduction and it, I will talk about stateless services first. If you get Argo rollouts, you get a Kubernetes controller that gives you access to progressive delivery. So you can do stuff like um, blue-green deployments where you deploy a second version of your application. Nobody is touching it. You can run some QA tests, some smoke tests. You can give it to your favorite friend. They can test it, and then once you're ready, you say, okay, now I promote, and you're off the races. There is also the Canary deployment where you do a similar thing, but instead of having um, a single point where you do a switch, you gradually send traffic to the new version. And as soon as you gain more confidence, you switch more traffic until you reach 100%. Uh, another thing that you might not know is that Argo Rollouts has built-in support for several traffic providers, but until recently, you had to request a provider, say I'm using Nginx, HI Proxy, Solo, whatever, and they had to add support for this in the project itself. Now, there is a plugin mechanism in Argo Rollouts, and I'm also involved in the Gateway API plugin for Argo Rollouts, which means that from this point onwards, um, you don't need to wait for the project to add support for something. If your traffic provider supports the Kubernetes API Gateway, it will be automatically supported uh, with Argo Rollouts as well. So if you evaluated Argo Rollouts some time ago and you said, oh, it's not supporting my traffic provider, you need to reevaluate again. Now, um, as part of my job, I always stay in the CNCF Slack channel and I follow the Argo Rollouts uh, Slack channel there and I see all the questions people are asking. And one of the most common questions was, okay, Argo Rollouts work great for a single application, but I have two applications. Usually it's a front-end and a back-end and I want to do progressive delivery for both and I want my new back-end to talk with a new front-end. So this was a very popular question and I did a presentation last year for this, so if you have this question, uh, you can either read the blog post and um, watch the presentation again. So that's the intro. Now today we're going to talk about using Argo rollouts with stateful services, and because stateful services mean different things to different people, essentially it's this scenario. You have an application that, that is not an HTTP application, maybe it doesn't have an endpoint at all, like an HTTP endpoint. The classic example is you have a worker. So you have an application, you launch it, and then it goes to a queue, reads some stuff, runs something, and may maybe it saves the result back to the queue. Or some people abuse the database as a queue, so you read something from the database, and then you store it back. And instantly, you will see that Argo Rollouts knows nothing about this connection. It's not something that you do with a traffic provider. So you say, okay, that's great. I will use Argo Rollouts with my worker, you, let's say, select a blue-green deployment, you start the new version instantly, it goes to the production database and starts reading tasks. And almost always, this is not what you want to do. You want to start the new application and leave production untouched and maybe run some tests, as we said, in the, um, the new application until you are certain about it. So people saw this and they said, okay, Argo rollouts doesn't work with stateful services. And I know this, because, as I said, I monitor the Slack channel, and this has been one of the most popular questions this year. 
So people are asking, how do I use Argo rollouts with stateful applications? There is even a whole discussion uh, in GitHub. And they all ask the same thing. I have an application which is not following HTTP. It doesn't have traffic that my traffic provider supports. What do I do? And until recently, they said, OK, I'm not going to use Argo rollouts. But you shouldn't do this. You should use Argo rollouts even for these applications. So how do you solve this? The simplest scenario is you say, OK, I have my application running. It's using my production database. And now I'm going to start the new instance. And I will create a brand new database or a brand new queue. It doesn't matter. And this will be just for the new version. So the production version will not see anything at all. Live users will continue looking at, the, at version 1.0. And they will still use the production database. And your new application will go to a new database just for that. So this means that not, not only production is not affected by what you're doing, but also you can take this magic preview database and put, let's say, test data, some custom scenarios that you want to test. So you also have an easy way to give custom test data to your new version, and then run smoke test, QA test, manual test, and then decide and say, OK, now this is ready to go. So how do we do this? Uh, we can do this scenario pretty easily with some components that I'm going to talk about. The first component is the Kubernetes Downward API. And this is an API that you get for free with Kubernetes. It's unrelated with uh, Argo rollouts. And essentially, it's a very nice feature where you can put some special labels on your deployment or your pods. And then these labels can be mounted as the file system in the pod. You can also use environment variables, but it's not a very good solution. We will see why. And essentially, you can say, um, take these labels and mount them in your file system in any path you like. Here, I have an example at etc pod info labels. And then your application can read the labels like a normal file. So the application doesn't know anything about Kubernetes. It doesn't even need to know that it's running in Kubernetes. It just reads um, a configuration file. And you have passed the configuration file via Kubernetes. So we can use this scenario with our problem and say we will pass some special labels to our application. And we will tell the application whether it's running right now in Canary or not, making the application uh, smarter. And we will also have our source code read those labels. And then the source code can adapt according to the situation it is running on. Uh, the Kubernetes API, as I said, supports also environment variables, but we're not going to use them. Stick with just files. So that was one component. The second component is Argo Rollouts Ephemeral Labels, which is part of Argo Rollouts. And essentially, it's a capability that Argo Rollouts give you when you define your Canary or your Blueprint deployment. You can tell to Argo Rollouts, hey, while the Canary is running, the active service should have these labels, and the preview service should have these labels. And these are managed automatically by Argo Rollouts. Like once the Canary is not running, the preview labels are not there. Once it's running, they are added by the, the our rollouts itself. So now you can imagine if you put all those components together, we have the magic sequence where we have the application. It's running in its initial state. It's using the production database. And we have told it via labels that, hey, now, right now you're running in production. Then we say, OK, let's do a blue-green deployment. We will launch a new application. And for that application, we will tell it via labels, hey, you're not running in production yet. So go look at a special preview database that I have just created just for you. And you will leave production untouched. So at this point, you, know, you can pause the canary like um, normal, do whatever you want to do with the new version. Production stays unaffected. Live users don't see anything strange. And then at some point, you promote the Canary or the Blue Green deployment, and you say, OK, I completely removed my original version. It's gone. And then for the new version, hey, from now on, you are running in production. So change the way you access the database or the queue. And then from that point onwards, you're back to, to uh, square one, where you have a new version as a stable version. So from this diagram, you can see that the first part is kind of easy, but the magic moment is in the third square, where you say to the application, hey, your role has changed. Do something different now. You're not in canary mode anymore. Now you're in production. So we need another component for this, which is auto-reloading of uh, configuration. I've seen 
a lot of applications where this, they have this simple behavior. You start up as an application, you did the configuration, and then you're done. That's not the correct way to do it. The correct way to do it is to read the configuration from files. You should, of course, have configuration files for your DB or your queue. And then you need to monitor the files and understand if they have changed and then auto-reload the configuration. And unfortunately, or fortunately, you need to talk with the developers about this. So I know that sometimes you think the developers don't know what they are doing and we are the best. No, you should talk with the developers. Tell them what you need. Actually, you should tell them that this is uh, a good practice to have anyway, even if you're not using Argo rollouts, it's a good practice to have your application understand when its configuration um, has changed and auto-reload this. And because I've made this discussion with developers, I'm giving you today the ammunition and I can tell you that there is a library for their favorite programming languages that does exactly this. So if they tell you, no, we don't know how to do that, you're going to ask them, oh, you're using Spring, there is this refresh scope, you're using Ruby, there is this thing, this thing. The demo that we're going to see today is with uh, Golang application. So it's very easy, in most cases, just one or two lines of code where you say to the application, hey, load the configuration and then keep um, monitoring it in order to understand if it's changed or not. And if it has changed, then reload it. So it is possible, but they need to do a, something about it. Uh, usually one of, in all my presentations, I select one slide and I say this is the most important slide of the presentation. And in all my past presentations, this was a technical slide, but in this presentation, it's this slide. So for this thing to work, you need to talk with the developers and convince them and make them understand what you need and have them make those changes. If they don't make the changes, then everything I'm talking about today either will not work or it will work with a lot of more effort. Uh, because I know what you're going to say, oh, I want the application to reload, I will kill the pods, and they will restart, and they will load the configuration again, which is not how you do it. Okay, so enough about the theory. Let's see the demo. So I already have an application deployed here on my cluster. This is the Argo Rollouts uh, CLI, and nothing is happening right now. There is only one version. It's both the stable, the preview, uh, everything. And I've actually made this application just for demo purposes, and it shows me what it's doing. So this is the application that's running right now. It says I am version 1.0, and I know that my role is active. I'm in production right now. I'm also printing my uh, configuration, like where do I get the, configura the configuration from? It's from etc slash uh, pod info labels. This is also another good practice that I suggest that applications should say where they load the configuration from. So it makes things easier for you to understand why something is not working or not. So even if you're not using Argo rollouts, I think this is a good idea to follow. And then this application also says, I'm going to use a, a RabbitMQ server. I'm using for the demo RabbitMQ, which is just a key implementation, you can use a Kafka or DB or whatever you want to use, just as an example. And this application knows that it hits my production queue. So this application is a bit smarter than other applications. It's no, it knows it's running in production right now. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm saying, okay, this application runs fine. Let's create a brand new version. So I'm coming here in my manifest and I'm going to edit the manifest. And then here you can see the magic labels that say what you do in the um, preview and in the active case. And you can see I pass different labels for the role. So here at the top it says your role is active, but at the bottom it says your role preview. And also you can see the RabbitMQ server stays the same, but I'm using a different queue. This is just an example. You could say use a completely different instance of RabbitMQ as well. So I'm coming here, and the only thing I'm going to change is not any setting. I'm just going to get the new version. So as an administrator, even my job is very easy because I just changed the version. I don't care about the settings. I've set them once in the definition. I change the version, and I say I want version 2. <laughs> and then I'm going to apply. And I have a new version. So if I go now to my rollout, 
I have two versions running. One is running in production, the other is uh, the new version, and you can see right now that the active is still the old one. So just for demo purposes, it's paused, nothing happens automatically because I want to show you what is happening. Of course, in a real production scenario, this could be automatic. So now, if I restart my port forwards, So now this is production, and nothing has happened. Production still runs version 1.0, and it's using the production database, but I have a brand new version, which is running production 2. And this application, and it's easy in this demo to see the change, has a completely different configuration here. So in this example, you see my configuration was just the location of RabbitMQ, but in a real application, I might connect to three databases, five queues, or whatever. So this application clearly says that its role is preview, so it knows, it knows it's not running in production. And I can also verify this uh, with RabbitMQ. So this is my RabbitMQ uh, port, and you can see right now I have two queues there, one for production, one for non-production. And also I can play with my uh, tester, which in a real scenario to be my production instance using this service. So here I'm saying this is production, so send messages to production. And then if I go to production, you can see the messages here, the ones I just sent. So my production messages go to production, and my new version doesn't know anything about them because it's talking to a completely different queue. And then here, let's say it's my integration test or my smoke test or my QA team or whatever, and I'm sending preview messages to my new version, and then these are only picked up by the preview version, and production knows nothing. So I have achieved what I wanted just by changing the version on my side. I have two applications running. They are completely isolated, even though there isn't like a traffic manager um, in between. And I have all the time in my world, you know, to do as, as much testing as I want. So now we reach the magic point which, if you remember, is the promotion. So I'm going to promote, and I'm saying, OK, I'm ready. I like the new version. Everything works fine. And now, if I go back to the rollout, you can see that the new version is active, and in 19 seconds, the old version will disappear. So if I start my port forwards again, So now everything should be the same. This is version 2, and now it knows it is active. The preview is also the same. We don't need to look at the preview. You see it's active. And I think the best demo to show this is now if I send some messages to production. So I'm sending some more messages to production, and I go here. If you look at the log, it's pretty clear the cutoff point where the application was running in canary mode, so it was picking tasks from the preview uh, queue, and it says preview message sent at. And then as soon as I promoted my Canary, now the application says, OK, I'm running in production, so I'm going to stop picking tasks from the preview queue, and I'm going to start picking tasks from uh, production. So that's it for the demo. But I want also to show you in this particular case, and it's not important that you know it's um, uh, go lang, it can be, as I said, in any language, that as far as the developers are concerned, the only thing I had to add here So here you can see I'm saying these are my properties. These are things that you read from the configuration. You are going to search for them at a standard path. So as I said, the, the application doesn't even know that it's running inside Kubernetes. And the magic lines are these four lines from 35 that essentially says, hey, place a monitor on your configuration, and if the files have changed, then auto-reload. So you don't need to restart any pods or kill something in order for the application to understand its new configuration. This is something that happens automatically, and I already gave you all the examples about the other programming languages. So as far as the application con is concerned, this is the only change they need to do in the source code, and as far as you are concerned, the only thing I added was 
the part about the labels that I showed you before. So this is just a standard uh, blue-green deployment. It has everything that you would expect, and the new section is this one, uh, the preview um, and metadata. That is for the labels themselves. And then at the bottom, you can also see the Kubernetes downward uh, API, where I'm saying take these labels and mount them as etc slash pod info. So this, this part is your responsibility. The source code is the responsibility of the developer. So I want to show how you know, clear is the, um, the distinction between tasks. So if you cooperate with the developers, everything works as it should. Ah, so this is um, the same example repo I used and the QR code. So everything you have seen is completely open source. You can follow it by yourself. So what have we seen today? It's possible to use Argo rollouts for stateless services, and Argo rollouts has built-in support for many popular traffic providers. Even if your traffic provider is not supported by Argo rollouts, check the Kubernetes Gateway API and see if your traffic provider supports this. There is a plugin for that. If you want to use it for stateful services with a technique you have seen today by using the downward API, ephemeral labels, and auto-reloading configuration, you can use this in application as well. So essentially, there is nothing stopping you right now to adopt Argo rollouts for your applications. Uh, I will monitor the Slack channel, and if I see any more excuses, I will create a blog post or a presentation. Thank you. Kostis, uh, if I may ask a question. Uh, thank you for this presentation. That's a very interesting uh, technique, uh, very useful. I have a specific question. So you mentioned that um, the uh, application, the previous application reloads the file, right? And then you said 15 seconds later, remove the old version. Now, my question is, do you have some way for this application to tell the rollouts controller, hey, I finished? Because the, my question is, what if this new application is stuck in some way or cannot read the new file. You don't want to remove the old version before you are sure that the new one has successfully reloaded the config file. So that's a great question. And one thing I didn't show you because it was uh, Golang specific. Uh, here, if you look at the, the source code, essentially, apart from reloading, it also runs custom code that says to the application, stop now first. So if your application is doing something at this point in time with this stop now function or whatever you use, you can say, wait five seconds until you're finished and then do it. So again, it's up to you to decide when this cutoff uh, happens. But you need to talk with the developers and tell them what you're doing so they know better the way of you know, stopping something in the middle. Got it. Thanks. I have another question, if you don't mind. So that's a really great demonstration how it should could work with a simple data, but uh, let's imagine that we have a database that is password protected, and we could not afford uh, authentication to service account in that case. It could be external service that is not integrated with a cloud provider. So any hints which direction we should look for a solution? <laughs> so, so how you use uh, secrets with uh, Argo projects is probably question number zero in popular, no, question number one. Question number one is, zero is how you deploy Argo CD, and question number one is how you, you do with secrets. Uh, it depends on the secret solution that you are using. So if it's like, no, sealed secrets or an external operator or something else, I would try to make uh, the settings, not the secret itself, but maybe, for example, the token that you use in order to fetch secrets or the authentication method that you use to fetch secrets. Okay. So the application is not responsible for reaching for its own secrets, and then you have to put all this stuff in Argo rollouts. Yeah. In Argo rollouts, you just enter the new way of fetching uh, secrets. But you know, you might be in a company that says, I don't care about this risk. So the application, as soon as it's, it's launched, it has access both to, let's say, preview secrets and production secrets at the same time. Maybe for some people this is acceptable, maybe for some people it's not. Uh, there is another big discussion, which is not for now, which is whether you have your application you know, reload all the configuration it needs during startup, or it loads configuration dynamically as it goes. That's a very good topic, but not for today. Okay, thank you. Uh, so another question here. In your example, you are stopping application inside, inside the pod, inside the container, yeah? Yes. When the pod changes. So when the config map 
which is basically the source of the of the change changes all the applications in all the pods in the stateful set will restart so basically we might drop some packets that are going to, to them so is is there any difference between this and restarting all the pods except for speed because we will be, have downtime anyway so in this demo this was a simple demo so the application just worked the database maybe in a real application you would have requests there as well and then, okay, last one. And then uh, you could use the traffic provider as well and handle the traffic provider. Thank you. That's it. Thank you very much.